Well, here we are again now to finish up Unit 5. All of you will remember that in Unit 5 we're talking about home, and in the first part of the unit we had an example of a conversation, someone, someone who was moving into an apartment, finding a new home, you could say. We looked at the ED ending, the id, t, d representation and the pronunciation of these markers of the past, also used for the past participle of regular verbs. And now we move on today. Uh, we have one little thing left over from last time, one of these advertisements. Uh, you see it there before you, room to let, lots of privacy, leave message. Again, possible questions. Is it furnished? Is the bathroom shared? Is there a laundry room? Where is it located? How much is the rent? Those are just practice uh, exercises, more grammar than listening. But now let's move on to part two. We're going to hear a tour of an apartment. Uh, someone who's interested in an apartment this is, of course, Beth, you remember, and she's give, being given a tour by Mr. Azizi. Some pre-listening questions. What do you like and dislike about the home where you live now? Well, I hope you like it more than dislike it. You might like the location. Uh, you might like the size. You might uh, dislike your neighbors. I don't know. All kinds of possibilities. Uh, number two, who found your current home? Current means the one you have now. Well, many of you would be living with your parents, so actually they found it for you. Uh, others may have gone of you have gone to an agent. You may have got it through a friend. I really don't know. In your experience, in what ways are apartment managers generally helpful or unhelpful? Well, it depends on the person, huh? Some of them are helpful. You have a broken door, they fix it. Uh, they bring you the uh, uh, the rent, uh, the bill on time, and things like that. It all depends. People are different. Let's preview vocabulary. In vocabulary, just have five items here. My apartment lease says that I have to stay there for one year. We discussed this once, one time before, a lease, a contract, agreement, to live in a home for a period of time. If you move into an apartment, probably you will sign a lease. It's a good idea. It protects you, and it protects also the owner at the same time. Uh, number two, I need a new apartment. Is there an available apartment? Very nice word adjective meaning you can get it. Uh, is, for example, skimmed milk available at the store? So, a nice word. Number three, my shower is broken. Can you fix it? I'm sure you all know to fix, to make it good again. Number four, E, you don't have to sign a lease for this apartment. You can just rent it month to month. And they put there without a yearly contract. Uh, that you probably mean without a lease. And number five, a pipe in my bathroom has a leak, and now my bathroom is full of water. Leak means that uh, some liquid is coming out that shouldn't. A crack or hole that allows liquid to escape. Not a good thing to have, and if you're living in an apartment, you have to get in touch with your landlord. But let's now get down to the actual nitty-gritty of this unit. Listening for main ideas. Now, I probably shouldn't have shown you this already. Let's do this as we did before. Just listen and then try to identify the general, what parts of the house are being shown. Okay, so listen now to our, our conversation. Remember, Beth is being shown around her new apartment by Mr. Azizi. Mr. Azizi says. So, here's the living room. Oh, uh, please don't touch the walls. We just painted them. I hope you like green. Beth. Uh, well, green is not my favorite color. Mr. Azizi. As you can see, there's lots of light in here. And here's the fireplace. It's great in winter. Beth. Phew, it's warm in here, isn't it? Is there any air conditioning? Uh, Mr. Azizi. Uh, no, there isn't. Uh, just keep this window open. Uh, it's almost never this noisy. Beth, I'm sorry, what did you say? Mr. Azizi, uh, come this way. Uh, here's your kitchen, an electric stove, a dishwasher. This big refrigerator is included, and there's room for a breakfast table here. 
Beth, that's nice. Uh, could I see the bedroom? Mr. Azizi, sure. It's over here. We just put in new carpeting, so uh, we raised the rent $25. Beth, oh, really? Hmm, the bedroom looks a little small. Mr. Azizi, but look at all the closet space. And here's the bathroom with a shower and a bathtub. Beth, oh, what about that leak? Mr. Azizi, hmm, I can't believe it. The plumber just fixed it last week. Beth, uh, if I decide to take this apartment, when can I move in? Mr. Azizi, it's available on the first of the month, so that's actually the day after tomorrow. Beth, I see, and uh, do I have to sign, I mean, is there a lease? Mr. Azizi, it's up to you. You can sign a one-year lease, or you can pay month to month. So, uh, are you interested? Beth, uh, possibly. I need to think about it a little more. And I have a few more questions. Mr. Azizi, no problem. Let's go to my office and talk. Now, which rooms is the manager showing Beth? Well, you should have been able to uh, hear about the living room, the kitchen, the bedroom, and the bathroom. Well, those were the different rooms. Is this a good apartment or not? Well, I put for Beth, probably not. There were a lot of things she didn't seem to like, and at the end she says, possibly, which doesn't sound very interested. Uh, what's uh, best decision likely to? What's best decision? I put down likely to be no. If I had to choose yes or no, I would choose no. Now, if this was a passage of yours, it would have been good to take notes, and they're showing you here a way of taking notes because this is a tour of an apartment. It would be a good idea to do what we call plus and minus, putting good things and bad things. And so this is divided into differing rooms, the living room, when taking notes, good things, lots of light, fireplace, the bad thing, you heard she didn't like the green color, no air conditioning, noisy. So if you took notes along these lines, it'd be very easy afterwards if I asked you, what didn't she like about the bedroom? Ah, it's small, it'd be easy to find that. Kitchen. Basically, good things. She liked it. There's electric stove, there's refrigerator, dishwasher, room for table. She said, that's nice. So it sounded like she liked everything in the kitchen. The bedroom, there was new carpeting, we heard, and there was closet space. But she said it was small. So good things and bad things there, both on both. The bathroom, we heard there's a shower and a bathtub. Now, very often today, uh, you have one or the other, usually the shower more than the bathtub, so that's something special to have both of them. The bad thing was the leak. And finally, the apartment in general, uh, I think we would consider it a positive. You have a choice between the lease or the month to month, and it's available very soon, so those are positive. But remember, one of the bad things was we heard the rent is now more expensive. So these would be facts that you would need to get down from listening. Now, that's in terms of meaning, in terms of the general meaning of the passage. But, of course, we're concerned about other things as well. So let's look at the vocabulary here at the top, reviewing the vocabulary, using it. Discuss the following questions with a partner, that's me, of necessity. Use the underlined vocabulary in your answers. Uh, what is the advantage of a lease? Well, for the renter, it gives him security. Uh, for the landlord, the same. Of course, the disadvantage is that you, you have to pay for the whole time. In other words, you probably can't leave just when you like. Number two, why do some people prefer to rent a place month to month rather than for a whole year? Well, some people don't know what their plans are, and they don't want to pay for six months or pay an extra month, so it may, sometimes it's nice to have a, a flexible arrangement. Um, if, number three, if anything breaks in your home, who fixes it? Well, I don't know in your case, but 
Uh, if you have somebody handy uh, in your family, they can do it. Otherwise, you probably have to call in a workman, somebody to fix it for you. Number four, if your friend is moving to a new house or apartment, what days are you available to help him or her? Again, I don't know. In my case, it wouldn't be very many, but usually weekends, in this case here in Saudi Arabia, usually Thursday, Friday, it all depends. And finally, number five, five, if your ceiling has a leak, what should you do? Well, if you're in an apartment, you're going to notify the manager. Uh, if uh, it's in your own home, you'll have to get a workman yourself uh, to fix it. Now, some uh, language functions, things we had also in the reductions, uh, making requests. In English, we're very concerned uh, to be polite about these things. You don't say, take this book. You say, would you please take it? Or could you, would you please, can you please, would you mind doing that? I'd like you to, I need you to. But you don't just command people. You say it would not go over very well. If you want to agree, it's very easy. You say, certainly, of course, I'd be happy to, I don't mind, sure. Uh, when you want to refuse, though, try to be polite. You don't just say no. That's not very polite. I'm afraid I can't. I'm sorry I can't. I hope you don't mind that I can't. I'm sorry it's impossible. If you wanted to be very definite, you'd say, absolutely not. Not at all. But usually, we're trying to be polite, and so we use phrases such as the indicated there. All right, now we come on to what we always like to do, our context. In a context, you hear a conversation, and you have to make a judgment. Now let's look, listen to these con conversations and see why we've decided to choose these answers. Number one. Conversation one. Sorry. Uh, here we are. Conversation one. Sam. Alex, can I talk to you about something? Alex, sure. What's up? Sam, you know, last night I couldn't study because of all the noise, and then I couldn't sleep either. You kept me up till 3 a.m. What did Alex probably do last night? A, studied for an exam. B, made noise until 3 a.m. C, went to sleep. Well, the correct choice is clearly B, because he's complaining about the noise and that he couldn't study and he couldn't sleep. So probably uh, the other person was making noise. Now, conversation two. Amy, I hate my roommate. Look at this. All the dishes are still on the table from last night. And her clothes. She never puts them in her closet. They're on the floor on the chair, everywhere. Susanna, Amy, why don't you talk to her about it? Amy, I already talked to her about 10 times. She won't change. Question two, why does Amy hate her roommate? A, because she is messy and doesn't clean. B, because she won't talk to her. C, because she doesn't take care of the furniture. Well, we're going to choose A, because messy and not clean goes along with the dirty dishes, the dishes unwashed, and the clothes everywhere, clothes scattered around. So A would be definitely the best choice. Number three, Tara and Kim. Tara, do you mind if I watch the news? Kim, yes, actually I do. My favorite comedy is coming on right now. Tara, is that more important than the news? Kim, don't start that again. We had the same arguments last night. Just turn to Channel 4, okay? Which of these is probably true? They, meaning Tara and Kim, like the same television uh, shows. B, they usually watch the news. Or C, there's only one television in the house. Well, A is clearly not true because they're arguing about it. They usually watch the news. That's not clear because 
Uh, she says, do just turn to the uh, channel four for the comedy. So actually C must be true because if they had two televisions, one could watch this, one could watch that. So we're going to choose C. Uh, notice news or comedy, same last night. So it's a general problem. There must be just one television. That apparently is the problem. Uh, number conversation four between Joe and Sasha. Joe, Sasha, we need to pay our, bill, our bills today. The telephone bill is $360 and the gas is $40. Sasha, okay, so I'll give you $200. We're sharing everything half and half, right? Joe, yes, but it's not fair. You made most of the phone calls. And I almost never cook. So I don't want to pay half of these bills. Sasha, but Joe, we agree to pay everything 50-50. What does Joe think? A, his roommate should pay more than half. B, his roommate uses the phone too much. C, his roommate should pay all the bills. Well, A is the correct choice because he is not happy paying half. He believes he owes less. Uh, B is not correct. He uses the phone. That's not the question. Pay all the bills? No, he doesn't expect you to pay all of it, but he shouldn't pay half. And our final context, conversation five. Carol and Alice. Carol says, Alice, you know your friends have stayed with us for over a month. Alice. I know, but they haven't been able to find their own place to live yet. Carol, I understand, but we just have one bathroom, a tiny kitchen, kitchen, and not much privacy. Alice, but they're so nice. You really think there's a problem? Carol, yeah, we can't even relax or watch TV when they go to sleep on the living room floor. What is probably true about their apartment? A, it has four bedrooms. B, it's not comfortable for four people. C, the rent is shared by four roommates. If there were four bedrooms, they'd have no problems, and they do have problems. B, it's not comfortable, that's clear. C, the rent is shared by four roommates. No, that's the whole problem. It belongs to Carol and Alice. They're paying the rent, and the other people are just staying on there. All right, so that was uh, our context section about the home. Um, in the, on the next page, you see a situation looking for a roommate. That's uh, another way of looking for a new home. And then we come to the real world task, caring for someone's house. Now at the bottom of the page, those of you who have the book, uh, will have a nice color picture, but at least even those who are looking now I uh, can see this is a very nice home. Some people leave their home to go on vacation. We're going to hear about directions which are given to uh, a young person who's going to take care of a home while the owners are gone. Now, what they're going to point out in this exercise is we can use what's called a graphic organizer, a multi-column chart. I hope you're acquainted with the term column, one, two, three, four, different columns. The first one of classes, the next one of tasks, how long, what will I do if. It's a nice way to organize things. And also, if you listen to a passage, sometimes it's nice to organize them. Well, in this case, though, it's quite different because you are given, you are given the, the section and it looks like this. You have the various columns. huh? You see the columns here that have to be filled in according to what you hear. First of all, we have the item to take care of, what to do with it, how often or when to do it, and then any extra details or notes, so different columns. So if you had this as an exercise, you would need to fill in the missing parts. So I'm going to read the conversation, which gives you the information, and then we'll check whether you got all of the information. So if you like, you can do this in your book, if you have the book, or if you have it here, you could look at the various sections. I can't show it all at the same time, but 
to fill it in. You could make your own little chart if you wish. This is a, a, a conversation between an uncle and Beth. So this is Beth's uncle who's going on vacation and is asking Beth to take care of things. So listen to understand. If you wish, you could take notes on it as well so that you can fill in the chart. Preparing to leave home for a vacation. Uncle. So Beth, you're sure you have time to do some things for us while we're away? Beth, no problem. Just let me know what you need done. Uncle, okay. First, you can get our mail from the mailbox and any newspapers in the yard and just put them inside the front door in a bag. Now notice, if you looked at your chart there, we have a section about newspaper, pick up from yard, but the question was how often and any details. So keep your mind open on that. Uh, fine, how often do you want that done, Uncle? Every day, actually. But you'll need to feed and walk the dog twice a day anyhow, so you'll be over there. Beth, I see. What do I feed the dog? And how far should I walk him? Uncle, just give him a cup of dry dog food around 8 in the morning, and another around 5 in the afternoon should be fine. I'll leave a big bag of dog food in the kitchen. Walk him around the block when he's done eating. Oh, and keep his water bowl filled up if you could. Beth, sure, anything else? Uncle, well, the garbage collector comes Tuesday, and I'm going to leave the garbage can down by the street today. But Tuesday night, be sure to put it back in the backyard for us. Beth, I suppose so. Uncle, oh, and be sure to water the rose bushes in the front yard. Beth, how often should I do that? Uncle, two or three times a week if it doesn't rain. Beth, so is that all? Uncle, just one more thing. You're welcome to enjoy the swimming pool, the house. You know we have a nice giant plasma TV. Just clean up, clean up if you use anything, okay? Beth, how about the keys to your BMW? Um, Uncle, sorry, uh, the car is not included. All right. So if you listen to that, and if you want to do it more, more than once, you may do that right uh, at home. But today I'd like to show you the solution, how you would have filled it in, and how easy it would make it, make it then for you to answer questions. You see, if you filled in the chart, then you'd be able to answer how often you do things. So uh, we had already the mail newspaper. You pick up the mail from the mailbox. You pick up the newspaper from the yard, how often, every day, and what were the details? Put them in the bag inside front door. About the dog, you need to feed it, you need to walk it, and you need to water it. How often feed it? Two times a day, eight in the morning, five in the afternoon. Walk it, two times a day, same time. Water it when needed. And then we had the detail was already supplied. Dog food will be left in the kitchen. In the garbage. Bring can from street to backyard. When? Once. Next Tuesday. Not every Tuesday because people are gone. There will be no new garbage. And finally, uncle will take garbage to street. That was a detail. Rose bushes. Water them. Two to three times a week. Detail. Less if it rains. And finally, swimming pool and house. Clean up. When? After use. And finally, detail, welcome to use, but not BMW. Of course not. That would be silly. Well, I think that finishes the unit, the unit about the home. I think we talked about a lot of different things, about moving, taking care of the home. And so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. And don't forget to do your homework. Uh, next time or the time after, I'll bring the solutions for the homework, and we can go through them together. Okay, thank you very much.